Hello listener and welcome to our episode 80 of Double DM. This time we are discussing side characters, especially how to use side characters to further the narrative of your players and their party and also the world around them. These NPCs are major, they are important, they are living and breathing beings in your worlds that influence plots and other NPCs. And in this episode we are discussing how to use them to direct the narrative, how to influence the world and the players and a whole lot more. I would also like to let you know that there is a special announcement in this episode's mid-roll that you do not want to miss. So without further ado, let's jump into episode 80 of Double DM, how to use major NPCs and let's chat about making your TTRPGs better. And welcome to WDM episode 80. With me, as per usual, is my lovely co-host Emil and I am Niels. You know me and Emil and I'm not good at this. How are you doing today, Emil? <laughs> it's 80 episodes in. I'm not... <laughs> Maybe you should have thought about that before you went on this whole podcasting journey for nearly two years now, right? Yeah, maybe, but... Nah. Now, now it's too late. <laughs> exactly. Now, now I'm too invested in the sunk cost fallacy and all that shit. Exactly. <laughs> ah, um, what's the question now I'm doing? Yeah, I'm doing it fine. <laughs> <laughs> doing wonderful. It's been a great, great week so far for me. And it's only promising to get better. Oh, okay. Why is that? Well, uh, I, I don't know, because maybe I'm going to the cinema later today. I also have to meet up with my family uh, on Sunday for, for family food uh, at the best Italian place in the city. So that, that that's good. Okay, that's sounds awesome <laughs> italian food always good yeah it is right no um but yeah it's been a good week i've had two great great ttrpg sessions already not gonna have one this weekend though not gonna have one on the weekends for at least three weeks now which is good because sometimes you just need those weekends off to you know relax and exactly not do anything for a long time and just sleep in mm -hmm. which some people might not know but i actually do sleep some some people might think that i do, I do not sleep but i do sleep people yeah uh, the Twitter shenanigans are not not so real. I do sleep. Wink, wink. Like two hours a day, or what is it? Uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> disclose how long exactly needs. The, it's, it, numbers are just numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, okay. <laughs> So, how was your week? Did you have anything interesting happen, or are you just as boring as always? <laughs> no, actually, there was uh, there were good news. I got the results of my math test back, my ah, math exam, and you and failed. Passed. That's the good news. No, I passed. Hell yeah! So now I don't have to do any math modules anymore for my whole university. Yay. Never ever. So I'm done with math mentally and physically. I'm just done. <laughs> just yeah. forgot about two plus two, right? Exactly. I, I don't. I don't fucking care anymore. Numbers are just numbers right numbers are just numbers <laughs> right but math is not about numbers yes yeah, no. sadly not <laughs> <laughs> anyway did you have anything ttrpg related this week uh no sadly not our curse of strat campaign when uh, fell through through uh, because of scheduling issues one had to ah. had a work emergency and we are stuck on scheduling there so i didn't have any ttrpg sessions this uh -huh. week but there is one coming up on sunday oh. The one with the underground sunken ancient city of ancient mm -hmm. dragons and stuff. So yeah, I'm excited mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. what they will do. And I'm kind of creating a dungeon crawl without creating a dungeon crawl. It's a dungeon crawl without a dungeon, right? Exactly. More like a city exploration, but within a dungeon. It's weird, but yeah. That, that's what I have to prep still because <laughs> I'm definitely not procrastinating anything. <laughs> I still have to prep Titans for Tuesday as well. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's about it for this week. I, I don't have anything major, but yeah. Something else that happened, which none of us got, uh, went to was Gen Con. Mm -hmm. was last weekend. Yeah, it sounded like an awesome time. I wish I could have been there. I wish I can be there at some point. Maybe already next year. I may be planning something. Okay. Could be interesting. Yeah, Gen Con, right? Biggest uh, board game tabletop convention out there. Yeah. I, I, I want to go some sometime as well, but I have no exact plans yet. No, but it was interesting to see because this was the first year that 
kind of felt like we were creators in this space where Gen Con was held. Mm -hmm. At least for me, when I on, on Twitter, right, seeing the selfies, seeing the announcements, seeing everything from Gen Con, it felt interesting. It felt different than normal conventions or something, some events people go to. It felt like that was the place to be and I wasn't there. It, it wasn't that much FOMO of like me missing out or something, but it was, it, it felt like a connected event mm -hmm. from an outside perspective for the TTRPG people. It felt like this is the event, like even online, this was the week this space uh, kind of felt ecstatic, at least mm -hmm. for the event. Anyway, moving on from Gen Con to more personal stuff that we did. So you have a TTRPG session coming up. Mm -hmm. I had a TTRPG session on Tuesday and yesterday on Thursday. Um, the Tuesday one was interesting because it's still this weird political cat and mouse game between my players and a lot of different other factions of the Sword Coast mm -hmm. um, in Horde of the Dragon Queen to fight for this nobleman's life who seems to have information about the cult my players are after. So they want to interrogate him, but he was moved to a special cell where he cannot be interrogated. Uh, basically, he's been under placed under certain extra high um, watch by, uh, by the lords and ladies of Waterdeep. Um, and my players still need to get to him before he gets executed or sent off to a different country where he's supposed to be executed. So there's a lot of stuff going on my players need to find. And what I didn't expect my players to do, but obviously kind of sounds logical when you think about it, is that my players just want to schedule an audience with the lords and ladies of Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. Just go the legal route. Ask, ask your way, because at, at some point these lords and ladies will have to hear what you have to say if your story is legit and you want you say is true and the threats you speak are true right so yeah they just went the legal way they asked for an audience or asked for their story to be put in front of them and now they go the bureaucratic route mm -hmm. just paperwork 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 filing complaints filing reports and basically just dumping the whole truth on them and saying well if you believe us let us talk to this prisoner because it is necessary to stop impending doom or don't and face the consequences yeah, but it's not something you would expect from the group that from the things that I heard about the group. Like, I mean, it's not the thing that you would expect from any TTRPG player. It's not that it isn't logical, but obviously this is a long process to even get yeah. to that point where they want to go. And I, I was like, well, this prisoner is under special care. This prisoner is going to be executed. How do you get to them? Well, yeah, that, that is one of the official routes. I'm not going to block the route, obviously, but I was just surprised for players to go the legal way because basically my players go the way of don't ask for permission ask for forgiveness later because that's easier for them yeah this legal route is obviously the way to go mm -hmm. I, I i just didn't think about it because it's sometimes the most obvious things as dungeon master you do not think about and that's what i wanted to say with this it's, it was so obvious to go that route because obviously they know only the lords and ladies of Waterdeep can access this prisoner so why not ask them to access the prisoner yeah and they have a damn good reason for that too so it makes even more sense but yeah. yeah now the challenge is just presenting their reason in a way that actually gets them to be taken serious because mm -hmm. there's a cult that wants to resurrect an, a god that has been chained to the nine hells is something that every street corner bard could say to the guard they would necessarily believe you the problem my players have is they do not have any credibility yet mm -hmm. they're gonna get that soon that's why this adventure was so important at this point because they do not have any credibility yet they are gonna they're gonna need have to fight for it they're gonna have to have reason they're gonna have to have evidence and if they can bring that evidence and that reason i do i see no problem with them getting in front of the lords and ladies and talking to them right yeah it's just that they have to do this before any of the other factions get what they want because that's the problem they face an impending clock of doom basically because the cult wants to assassinate this prisoner obviously if the prisoner talks that's bad for the cult so they want to assassinate him there's the interesting part they need to be quicker and that's the one problem with the bureaucratic route it might be slow mm -hmm. maybe they get it fast enough if the play my players are persuasive enough they're gonna get there fast enough probably maybe i don't know they have a they have an impending clock of doom if they do not act before that's over doom happens i think we recapped enough for this week we talked a bit about everything and i think with that we should dive into our episode on major npcs and how using major npcs for your narrative and we will hear you all after the special mid roll with a special announcement
Hey everyone and welcome to the mid-roll of the show. If you are enjoying the show and content, why not subscribe or follow the show right now on whichever platform you are listening on so you can stay up to date with all episode releases. Then next you can search us up on social media at double DM pod or click the links in the info box of this episode to find our social media channels and follow us there if you want to stay up to date with all scheduling information and episode announcements. If you follow us on Twitter, you will also get a plethora of social media posts as I spend way too much time on that platform. But hey, I have funny conversations with people like you and post memes, so that's a great thing. And lastly, if you want to help the show out even further, rate and review us on your platform. A quick 5 star rating or a few sentence review really gives us the feedback we need to improve the show and help other people find our show too. And hey, you can also just tell a friend about the fun you had learning with us and get them to listen in too. Also, we want to say that our show has open advertisement slots for you to book. Just head on over to our Twitter or email address doubledmpod at gmail.com to get into contact with us about getting your content shown on our show. And now, Matt and Nick, please take the stage. Roleplay Chat and the Scry Society present the What is Roleplay Anyway charity panel. Today, I'd like to introduce Emil. Hello, I am Emil of Double DM Studios. I'm a TTRPG game master, player and podcaster from Germany and I've been playing for 9 years at this point. You might know me from the Double DM podcast where I and my co-host post weekly episodes discussing TTRPG theory, mechanics, creativity and role playing. I also organize the Wireworld Matters panel with Chill Touch RPG and Steam Sage, where we invite 5 other voices to discuss world building and creative writing. And also I'm the dungeon master for Double DM's first of many actual plays, Titan's Call, a story of hope and mystery in a world at the brink of apocalypse, where my players have to find the keys of how they are connected to cultists, titans and the certain ruined nation of the world. I am super stoked to be part of what is roleplay anyway, as I have learned a lot about roleplaying in my time from observing different people and playing a lot of different systems. It is fascinating to see how other people breathe life into ideas, concepts, descriptions and stats. And also how I do it myself, sometimes I don't even know that. That's all from me and I can't wait to see you when we all go live. Thanks Emil, looking forward to chatting as well. You can listen to Emil and the other panelists on August 26th at 6pm on the Scry Society Twitch page. See you there! And with that, welcome back to the episode about side characters. And as per usual, let's first talk about what we mean when we say side characters. So, Emil, please tell me what are side characters? I think the word side characters obviously feels wrong in the context of TTRPGs. Because side characters are something you see from movies, TV series, from video games, from books. People that are not the protagonists. That's basically the definition there. But I would obviously make the distinction also not throwaway, right? We talked a little bit about throwaways already. But I think especially with side characters, we want to talk about recurring characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the most important part about here is that a side character is someone that is not the main character of your TTRPG story, which is going to be the player character but it's gonna have an influence on either the player characters the world the story or whatever they're gonna be yeah. at least somewhat important mm -hmm. they uh, they kind of have an influence not only on the protagonists of your story the players but also the antagonist mm -hmm. so i and i think you, uh, you we could add to that that they further the story in anyway either by helping the player characters shaping the world or actively or passively helping the antagonist of the story yeah and i think with that obviously the question why are they needed is kind of answered but let's dive deeper into that they are there to further the story or influence the player characters or the antagonist or the world but why is that needed well it just makes sense, right? We, we had an episode on creating interesting NPCs, and this is going to be a lot of rehashing of that. But I think we said there that obviously you need NPCs to fill your world. Mm. And some of them are going to be important. Some of them are not going to, some of them are not going to be that important. And I think this is the real question. How important is an NPC? Because the more important they are for the story or for the world or for the players, the more they are going to contribute anyway. So why do you need more? Well, because obviously playing alone in a black box is boring. 
boring. Yeah. You need these non-player characters that are important to the story to give your players a way to interact with something. Mm -hmm. They're gonna. They, you need something that can drive the story forward that is not your BBEG or your players. And that are these important NPCs. Let's say a high mage, a king, or some of these. These would be side characters in the story of player characters, as long as these are more often broached. One big side character for me, for example, in my current campaign, or in one of my campaigns in my Hold of the Dragon Queen campaign, is the monk from the Harpers, Leozin, and Onta, uh, whatever his last name is, from the Ga Order of the Gauntlet. These are reoccurring NPCs that drive their own narratives forward in the world, but engage often with the PCs because they are natural checkpoints, more or less. Mm -hmm. They are the employers, more or less, in the first part of the adventure. They are natural checkpoints for the party to go to to find out what happens next. And that's why you need these, because without these, the party would be left wandering. They wouldn't have any real progression even in that game. And that's why these two side characters are very important to that story. Without them, there wouldn't be a progression in that story necessarily, or not a scene progression, because the players do not know the larger scale operations of the Order of the Gond and the Harpers that counteract the cult of the Dragon Queen. Yeah. The players just know what they did. But they don't know was that something big? Did we do something right? Or did we did we just win? Or did we just do nothing? compared to what they are doing. And those two characters are there to give information to, hey, this is what you did, this is the impact it has, and this is what we're going to do now. And that's why these two characters are important. And I think depending a lot of on what you are doing with your game, be it story, world, or BBEG-wise, the why of characters changes a lot, right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, these characters are there for you to, as we said in that NPC episode, NPCs are kind of windows to your world for your players. They are the places players can engage with the world world or interact with and that's what you need you also need windows to interact with the story and those are these important npcs the side characters as we call them or the reoccurring characters yeah i think they make the world feel more lived in yeah and more alive in general just breathing and a natural mm -hmm. thing like i think especially these side characters like we call them are there to not only engage with the player characters but also with the world itself mm -hmm. even when the players are not around yeah so it just makes it feel organic yeah the world is still moving and this mm -hmm. is a way for you as a gm to show your players that the world is still moving even mm -hmm. though they are not around that's the thing right your players want to talk to a random shopkeep and you make a shopkeeper and then three sessions later they want to talk to the same shopkeep again but you have no idea how the shopkeep was named that's because it was a throwaway npc that's fine it wasn't supposed to be a recurring npc or a recurring a side character because that npc was created in that moment to have a life only for that moment after that moment you didn't care for how they spent the rest of their life or how their life story went but these side characters are the portals as a breathing living being right they have their own agendas they do not stand still they feel like they have a place they feel like they have a story and that's the same as with tv series and video games these side characters are, cre are, are beings that have a story attached to them. Something that can run very, very deep, very, very engaging and interesting even, that doesn't necessarily become the main focus of the story because the main story follows our main characters. Where they mm. go, the main story goes. These side characters... However, go wherever their story leads them. And sometimes they appear, sometimes they do not. And I think that's important, right? It, it shows that your world is bigger than just the player characters, that there is more going on. And it also allows your players to engage with living, breathing beings, as you said, right? But the thing about that is, right, sometimes when we just make in a store NPC that your players want to buy stuff, right? You just make an NPC that has some quirk or whatever, it doesn't even have to be, that store owner is there, period. Your players go shopping a shop from the list the normal list in the books there is no haggling there is no sales whatever there is no interaction really mm -hmm. but if you have a real side character there they have a living breathing agenda right yeah they act on their own they basically even though we know ttrpgs are in a computer program most of these very throwaway npcs for me act like in a video game the throwaway store owner there you just go to engage with the store menu instead of engaging with the store owner but the store 
owners have their own living, breathing AI code, basically. I'm going from this on from code angle. The store owner doesn't have really any AI attached to it. It's just an interface for you to engage with the rules with the store of the game. Yeah. But the living, breathing side character has their own agenda, their own story, and acts on their own decisions. They, they make decisions. They feel like a living person because mm. that's what they have to be. They have to be interesting that way. Yeah, and I think th those more important uh, NPCs are also a way to ground your players into mm -hmm. the world even more. Yeah. Because the more a character occurs, the more of a bond the party all uh, naturally forms with that character. Be it good or bad, in whatever way, it still grounds them and ties them to the world itself. Mm -hmm. Because now they have allies, friends, enemies, rivals, or whatever it may be that now acts according to the information they got about the party with the party or whatever they want to do mm -hmm. furthering their own agenda yeah and sometimes these characters exist even before your players meet them right well, one of the best examples are two adventuring parties i know a lot of people like that a lot of people don't like it when there are other adventuring parties and basically stealing the jobs of your players whatever fits your world right whatever fits the thing you want to do sometimes it's good that you only have your players being the only adventurers in the world basically or not necessarily in the world but in the story mm -hmm. sometimes it fits when you have right but generally you have these characters that basically act on their own volition that act on their own decisions that act on their own skill sets and sometimes your players might encounter these people and realize oh we are not the only ones that's a way to ground your players but i think as you said the way grounding your players not only does it do that through connections but it also does that through powers sometimes these characters these side characters are very powerful be that in political power magical power wealth uh, abilities uh, fighting strength whatever but these might be very powerful and show your players that they are not the strongest beings in the world hmm. that they are not even the strongest humans or tieflings or elves or whatever but that they are part of a bigger world again yeah. it all, once again back to this part of a bigger world if you want your world to feel big and immersive one of the best avenues to do that is npcs as we said in our npc episode making npcs interesting will create an interesting world for you because these npcs need a story and that story develops in the world and that world then develops from these stories and now making these recurring npcs they have to be interesting and now you have a lot of avenues of interesting stories lores places in your world just through the npcs your players engage with on their story mm -hmm. and i think those contribute more to the whole story itself by having that interesting factor to them than just mm -hmm. being in the background and just being there or just being a way to interact with your players mm -hmm. because they are that much more because some of them can even open up more subplots or more stories themselves because mm -hmm. everyone has their own agenda their own main story for them and mm -hmm. this is something the players can then focus on or choose to ignore and mm -hmm. this then has more influence on the main story itself mm -hmm. because whatever the characters do is part of the main story kind yeah. of yeah obviously right the thing is that these npcs they have their own stories and the players uh, might choose to say this sounds interesting to us please tell us more and as soon as they get told more and engage more with it they realize that they want to par be part of that they want to be part of this side character story and the best way they do that is by engaging in that story for example a side character could be i don't know a magician that needs help with whatever not not just an experiment or something but this magician knows about an imminent threat to the country and they know about that imminent threat because of their research and that research is i don't know into temporal magic whatever right and now the players are interested in that what imminent threat is that and how do we stop it well i do not know how do we stop it we need to find out more about this temporal magic first and boom your players are invested in this temporal magic arc you wanted to do because there's an interesting story attached to that there's an in there's a monster that no one can face why is that well it can use time magic whatever right and that is an interesting part and th these npcs are a good way to give your players a good avenue into stories because right npcs are the window to your worlds and also to the stories i mean most stories start with an interesting npc or an interesting proposition to it and i'm talking about the beginning of a campaign where it's just a quest your players have to go to to get their first adventure done most of the time but it's most stories start with an interesting premise mm. and that interesting premise is probably delivered by an interesting npc that for that story probably becomes a little bit more major most of the time yeah a scholar sends your players on a quest to find star pieces or something that is basically rare metal that 
fell from the sky with meteorites. Mm -hmm. And now your players go retrieving these star metals. But suddenly there's some kind of magic attached to these metals. And your players come back and ask for an explanation why they didn't know about this magic. Well, no one does. And now this NPC goes with your players to figure out what this magic means. And this magic means that there's some kind of radiation basically destroying the world slowly and now that that Scala has become a recurring npc because your players will go back to them every time they have new information because you guessed it they are a friend of the player characters right player characters will make friends over the time in your campaign exactly because as we said time and time again we are social creatures and that translates to our player characters no matter how anti-social you want to play them at the end of the day we as humans still kind of imbue that social need into our characters obviously also because we want to play a game with friends where we have to play together to have fun and exactly. that's why you play together and then you find these friendly npcs and engage with them and that's how these npcs become recurring characters yeah and depending on what the character that you created wants to do or you need them to do mm -hmm. you can kind of categorize them which then yeah translate to different things that these NPCs or state characters can mm -hmm. do or should do mm -hmm, most of mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think, for example, let's stick to the friend there or friend, caregiver, best friend, whatever you want to call this trope. Yeah. This provides emotional support or acts as the voice of reason for the uh, for your player characters and is empathic, kind of grounds them a bit more. Mm -hmm. So you have an ally, even though it might not be a fighting ally or a political ally, just yeah. an emotional ally. Mm -hmm. Then another way in a side character can be there to ground your players would huh? be a love interest for example yeah it, but then again this trope can lead to a storyline or a theme where the villain then exactly targets this character because of the attachment the players have to that npc mm -hmm. and it kind of can show the emotional attachments to the uh, player characters or the player characters to that npc mm -hmm. and how far these player characters are willing to go mm -hmm. you can use those npcs to show different things to the player or to the world itself mm -hmm. any thoughts on that or no that that's great yeah i i feel like the thing about categorizing them is is hard for me actually um so I'm, I'm not disagreeing with the categories you mentioned or the ones you're gonna mention probably but i think that categorizing these npcs kind of misses the point a little bit because we don't need to categorize them i feel right because mm -hmm. these npcs are supposed to be unique and obviously they all f fall into some kind of categories what you want to do with them but each npc um, themselves, as we said, has their own agenda and has their own path and their own story and their own motivations background and that's why categorizing them works on what you want to do with them it kind of becomes unnecessary when you when you want to create them right because i don't you're not creating a love interest you're creating an npc that then at some point becomes a love interest right yeah that's the thing you you, you, you do not want to create an npc that is a love interest right because either the player does that themselves in their backstory and says i have this love interest or they fall in love with one of your npcs that you present but you do not say I want to create a love interest for this PC because that would be forcing yeah. love on someone in this in these games. And we can I think we can agree that we do not want that. Yeah, exactly. But I'm not saying that that saying uh, an NPC can be a love interest and has the, with that tag attached to them not uh, some special place in the story because that is definitely true. I just think we cannot say we can create a love interest. Yeah, um, I think especially these, like you mentioned, tags, mm -hmm. I think are way more fluent. They can yeah. change. They are interchangeable and mm -hmm. ch and changeable in general. Yeah. A best friend can turn to a villain or a rival or whatever. Yeah, obviously. And, and I think the thing is that um, these tags, obviously, right, best friend, love interest, rival, villain, get attached through the story because mm -hmm. no one starts as a villain yeah um, no one starts as a best friend these there's a history there and i think th that is why i would actually go into a different direction when we categorize them or give them tags or something because these tags you mentioned kind of are places where the npcs are currently at on this meta level they mm. are the best friend but i would say something way better to categorize them is what their purpose is because being a best friend isn't the purpose for an npc that is so important that has yeah. this magnitude of personality and backstory and motivation and stuff i think saying for example that they are a helper is important when they meet the players they are supposed to help the players in that moment 
They, they're not yeah. the best friends of the players yet. They can become this. But the, mo the moment they enter is defined by they are supposed to help the players in this instance. For example, the players are in a swamp and fighting something, but are losing. So you say, well, I had, I wanted to introduce this um, monk NPC. Well, now is a good time to show them. This NPC is supposed to help my players where they're going to help them in the combat. But that's their purpose in the game. They are supposed mm -hmm. to be a helper character. Or, yeah, what other other characters? categories there are right but that's the purpose you have for them at the beginning and then the friend and lover part or rival is where they're supposed to land because even if you create an npc that is supposed to be a rival to your players right sometimes mm -hmm. that might not even happen because your players have no intention of being riled up by this rival they just ignore them the rival part again comes from the player side this is our rival this is our friend this is my love interest mm -hmm. this is not something you attach to these npcs and force it down your players' throats. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying that, that your tags are bad. I'm just saying that they're kind of missing the point for talking about creating them because we cannot change if this character becomes the best friend or the worst enemy of a PC. Yeah. That is that is where they can land, but we do not know where they land as long as they do not meet the player characters. Yeah, true. But I think one thing that is like the helper trope mm -hmm. or tag that you mentioned is the provider of information of some sort. Yeah. For example, a the scholar you mentioned with the star mm -hmm. shards is is there to give your players information being it mm -hmm. a quest they were sent on or after that the information about the things they found out on the quest mm -hmm. or the teacher of a mm -hmm. pc or another npc or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is just there to give information in any capacity to the players yeah yeah but i think especially on the inf provider of information thing one th one thing that i like to use with that is some sort of a skeptic that is there mm -hmm. when the player uh, the player characters talk to this NPC and the NPC is just there to question the decisions and the information the party has gotten already to kind of make the party think about them. Is it all correct? Is it the way we want to go about this? Or is there maybe even a better way? It just mm -hmm. creates a situation that forces the players to think over the decisions they've already made mm -hmm. even though they might not be bad but it's just as the character is skeptic mm -hmm. of many different things yeah and maybe a bit too careful and what other implications that might have mm -hmm. obviously you could turn that around make the character carefree make uh, make the ca characters question themselves because of this character that is too carefree for the players even so yeah the thing is with the side characters, right? They are still side characters, right? They, we said yeah. they are important, but even then, they are just not as important as the main characters of your story. And they are still there to further that main character story. They have their own stories, but at any given point in time, their focus on a meta level is still further the story of the player characters in some yeah. way, shape, or form. Obviously, furthering the story can also mean halting it by being a rival or a villain. Mm -hmm. Them. That is still furthering the story because it creates another interesting layer. It creates a new NPC to interact with. It creates new avenues for your players to deal with stuff. But even if these NPCs still have their own stories, is still that their main focus in the game should be somewhat to be focused on the player character's story. Yeah, They have to have some way to engage with them. You do not drop an NPC into your player's hands or into your player's eyes without making them somewhat relevant to what the players are trying to accomplish. Oh, yeah. Because that's going to throw your players off. They're going to feel weird engaging with the NPC because players know. Players know when we DMs throw something at them that they are somehow in supposed to engage with it. But when they don't know how, it becomes this awkward moment of what should we do? Do, do we ask questions? Do we follow them? Do we just fight them? Or what do we do? And, and this becomes this awkward moment of very little baby steps by your players into some direction they think you want them to go because this NPC was just out of place even though they mm. might fit where they are supposed to be in the world so your players go to library and there is a sage but that sage is not in any way there to help the players with their story you throw this npc sage in there while your players are researching how to stop the end of the world and, and basically just talks about their research your players aren't going to be interested in it they're just going to yeah. ignore it because this npc isn't relevant to their story even though the story of this npc might be as in interesting as heck doesn't matter it isn't important. Yeah, uh, as we said, they need to have an impact on the story, mm -hmm. but also be uh, there for the characters to interact with in a useful way. Yeah, 
because just that they move the story forward in any capacity isn't enough. They need to have move the story forward on their own without interacting with the characters. But also there needs to be a common ground between the NPC and the characters to make it feel good and not out of place. If yeah, I want to talk about something that kind of more or less inspired this uh, episode because we talked about NPCs already. Why do we do this episode? Well, we talked about NPCs, but what about player characters? That What about player characters that are side characters? Hmm. Yeah. There are people that, for example, I do that sometimes. I know some other people do that. Critical Role and other actual players do that sometimes. And they invite other players to the table to play a few sessions or one session or a bit of a session with them, with, an, with a player character, with the actual character. That is a perfect side character example. This mm. is a living, breathing thing. It has full autonomy as it is controlled by another player and it has their own agenda. But in some ways, it still is there to further the story of the players themselves because as soon as that NPC is gone players are going to continue with their story so this NPC should in some way shape or form further the story of the players that can be through actively working towards the goal the players have or giving the players some other ways uh, to engage with the story my, my, it might be that this NPC is in search for a treasure trove of loot they want to fight a dragon sword well the magic items also will fit the player characters that play in the main story mm -hmm. that is also something that furthers the story but in a very different way that is first perceived basically yeah but the goal is still work together towards the player character's main story the, mm -hmm. the player knows they are just a side character but they still have full autonomy in the game and get to play but they know they are there to help the other player characters further their story yeah totally agree and i like to use that as well especially in one of my campaigns mm -hmm. that i had two guest characters side characters already mm -hmm. because uh, on the day we wanted to play ttrpg there was a friend visiting from back in the day whatever and they were also heavy into ttrpg so i thought hey why not and just made a possibility for them to play a side character and then they advance a character background story branch with the help of the side character because that's that side character had information about that. I written this character as an NPC mm -hmm. to help them. And so I thought, hey, why not? It fits the character you wanted to play anyways. So just change a little bit about it, of the uh, about the NPC. And suddenly you have a slot for a guest character, a side character, a player can play and interact on a more advanced and autonomous level with the party itself. And it just created interesting story moments, fun moments at the table, and just a great time. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a brilliant way you can use side characters to create fun in the party and at the table. And do you know why? Because if you have these NPCs and give them to another player at the table that is there. Obviously, that doesn't work all the time. It works at given points under special conditions. You have someone available that can play at the time and that is willing to play this NPC in your story, more or less. Mm -hmm. You do not have to create in the NPC, right? Because th that is something you need to watch out for. You need to watch out for not creating a DMPC because uh, now we're talking about this dangerous thing that the TTRPG world always talks about, the DM or GMPC. The GM putting a character into the middle of the story that they are playing and basically the others are just not that interesting. They This GM PC has all the information because they're controlled by the GM and they are more powerful and, and right all of these horror stories basically and first of all if you have this important npc and give it to another player first of all it cannot become a gm pc anymore because well <laughs> you're not playing it exactly but second of all um it gives us a good avenue in this episode to talk about dm pcs because how do you prevent from well creating a dm pc in this instance because like we said these npcs need to be important they have autonomy they have abilities but how do you make sure that your players do not get outshined or or do not get pushed out of the limelight by this NPC you have created? That, that's a tough question to define, because I think a lot of it comes down to the mindset of the GM themselves. Yeah, obviously. Because when I create a powerful NPC, mm -hmm. I usually try to keep them, uh, keep my players obviously in the limelight by playing it more supportively. Or yeah. it, shouting out information that they found on their research or whatever and not have it be there in the fight all the time not every single session mm -hmm. and just being it a minor thing that the players can lean on if they really want the help but decided by the players that they want that mm -hmm. this is something that i try to do 
Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if I'm completely nailing it, but as far <laughs> as I as far as I'm concerned, I think I'm I, I do. Yeah, because no player has ever complained about that, and I rarely play any NPC on the uh, character side in combat. So I think I'm deliberately making full blown character sheets for an NPC, no matter how important they are, because if if you're holding a character sheet, you kind of want to engage with the game on the with the character sheet. One of our last episodes talked about that. The thing about that is. If you have a full character sheet in front of you, you want to use everything on that character on that character sheet. You do not need a full character sheet for an NPC, right? It's easy to create a character sheet for an NPC, and I do that too. But I never play it like I have a full character sheet in front of me. Yeah. Because because if I have a full character sheet in front of me and I'm playing to that full character sheet extent, and the character is more powerful than my players, they are gonna notice. So mm -hmm. I look at the character sheet, for example. Okay, they have a lot of spells. So I even if they are a, wi a wizard and have thousand spells on their spell list, right? I only care about the ones that they actually have prepared, right? That's one of the first yeah. things. Basically, this NPC cannot change their spells. They do not have a spell book mm -hmm. or something like that, right? Uh, or if they're a wizard and you want them to have a lot of spells at their disposal, maybe give them a number of spells and another and, and, and an extra spell book. But whatever you want to do, uh, whatever you, how you want to do that. But I think the thing is that um, the first thing, as Neil said, the, the most important part about making sure that you do not create an, the NPC is your mindset. Check yourself. Do you want this character to outshine your players? Most of the people will say no. And that is the first step in making no DM PCs. The second step yeah. is, in my opinion, checking yourself on making them player characters from the game perspective. Make a full character sheet. It's the easiest way to create an NPC that is important because they have a lot of st stuff to do. But then take away a few class abilities. Maybe give them something else that, th that isn't even on the class ability table. Yeah. That is an interesting way to make an NPC unique. An NPC can be very unique if you give them something that is not on any character sheet possibility. Mm -hmm. And also take away a few abilities that your players have that makes your players feel unique as well. Because uniqueness is the best way to show everyone they are part of the limelight light because exactly. yes you can make an npc part of the limelight of your player characters essex thales in critical roles campaign 2 was exactly that in the end of the game mm -hmm. matt had an npc i feel like matt didn't necessarily want this npc to become a play a dm pc for the for the for the big part of this game that basically travels as another adventurer with the party but it happened and when your players ask for this obviously give them another player character that you control but check yourself at every given point in time to not make this character outshine the players. But ha let them have their own moments, but make sure that your players have their own moments as well. Right? The first thing, how you can do that is balance the power levels. Make them as strong as the player characters. That way, as they're part of the classes, if you, if you have a wizard NPC and your players are level 5, and you have a paladin level 5, and you have a wizard level 5, that wizard level 5 is just as effective as this paladin. And the paladin player will have something that's very unique to them, their smites and their special holy casting and stuff like that, that will, n most of the time, the player will not think that this wizard is gonna take all the limelight. Yeah, and I, th I think, it, like you mentioned, a DMPC doesn't necessarily have to be this inherently TTRPG horror stories stuff. Yeah, it doesn't have to be because of the mindset that you need to have the checkups you do with yourself without or for not stealing mm -hmm. the limelight or just focusing the limelight on this npc mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it can be a great addition to any party any player character's repertoire yeah because it adds so much to the party mm -hmm. without but you have to check that you're not stealing anything from mm -hmm. them for example one thing is i had an npc part of my game my players were running after these snake temples right mm -hmm. and i had uh, these three Medusa that my players engaged with and befriended and made basically major NPCs for their game. One of them was the fighter of that group. And my players said, hey, why don't you come with us? Or Well, the, the discussion basically went to let one of these three Medusas come with because they can sense when they're close to these snake temples. They are basically a compass for the players. And that was the big problem. They didn't know how to find these snake temples. So they took this NPC with them. They obviously had fighting abilities and stuff like that. But I made sure, for example, for the boss battle that they weren't part of the boss battle so they didn't outshine my players in parts of the boss battle because that would have been first of all harder to balance for me so obviously i had i had a stake in that that they are not part of the boss battle but second of all because it would have been way cooler if my players defeated the boss themselves instead of with help from an npc and i did that by well this this is this npc is part of the ancient race you are trying to stop the matriarch has the ability to control every single one of their race so it's bad when your fighting npc comes with you 
onto the boss battle because that would mean that they might be mind controlled and fight against you. Exactly. So my player said, you stay back when we find out where we have to fight or where the boss fight is. We will we will handle it. You hide. And that was it. And that was a good way to make sure this NPC doesn't outshine my players in the boss battle. Mm -hmm. That's all it took, basically. But that was me checking myself because I knew this NPC was kind of strong because they were a Medusa yeah. with fighting abilities. Mm -hmm. So I needed to check myself to make sure that this NPC isn't outshining my players all the time. And I did that through carefully crafting their step block. And second of all, making sure that they are at vital points in the, when it comes to combat aren't even there. They were part of a few combats before, but they weren't part of this vital combat that my players knew they had to do alone. Mm -hmm. That was me checking myself. That is important. Um, we talked a lot about all kinds of stuff with these side characters and how they are good and how what they are do. But I never think we, we never really put down how you can create, right? So we talked a little bit about what makes a side character goodness. But are there any other qualities that make a side character good? What are the most important qualities in a side character? Recap that for me, what we talked about already. And also kind of if you have anything else to add, what are the best qualities? The best qualities, I think, would be a imp an impact on the story on the main mm -hmm. storyline and a way to interact with the players regarding that yeah. point. Yeah, I would I, I, I would interject there real quick and say both these points basically put together an interest in helping the player's story forward exactly. or putting the player putting the player stories forward. Mm -hmm. Right again, that's the main quality for me being there for the main story that we are actually playing. Yeah, being it in regards for helping actually helping the players or mm -hmm. antagonizing the players. It also it all helps the story progress. I think this is what you meant, right? Yeah, it's and all then, about hmm? putting the story of the main characters forward. Yeah, then have that uh, NPC be deep, kind of. Mm -hmm. Have an own storyline, an, an own background, a, a whole backstory thing for them, Yeah, and a personality to make them feel unique and live uh, living, like living creatures. Mm -hmm. And this then leads to a way for your player characters to interact with the world and the NPCs to act with the world. All of that combines to a organic feeling lived in world. Yeah. And I think those are the main mm -hmm. most important qualities and a side character should have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay, then let me ask you, how do we get these qualities into a character? I know, obviously, checking ourselves as GMs, right? We need to pay attention to what we do as DMs. We don't just mindlessly create. But I think that's a step everyone kind of does as a GM at some point, right? I was, mm. at the beginning, I, I kind of mindlessly created stuff I wanted to have. Now I know the impacts of things. I, I've learned what impact certain things have on stories and, and, and characters, and that's important. Obviously, not the impact but how do you make a character that well first of all puts the story of the main cast forward but also has their own interesting deep storyline themselves that might not be that important to the current story but is still interesting to explore and know well <laughs> this is a callback to the npc episode but i yeah. think you make it uh, you should make a side character more multi-dimensional yeah a bit deeper a bit more mm -hmm. fleshed out like not just a flat 2d image but a 3d model basically mm -hmm. that you have multiple connections from that npc towards the main story and their own storyline mm -hmm. from those two maybe connect to the party or however you want to uh, to do that but you need to craft connections between the npc the story and the players mm -hmm. in any way on and around any corner you want to however convoluted you want to do that connection but there needs to be one yeah and i think thinking about the roles that your side character should do mm -hmm. being it a helper an antagonist or a provider of information is also a good thing to think about do you want to have an npc just give out information for the party that then relates mm -hmm. to the main story and th mm -hmm. therefore relates to the player characters and then maybe why does that information that they want to give the party relate to their own story yeah i mean it all comes back to purpose right what is the mm -hmm. why do you need this npc in the first place as in this interesting npc episode and this episode it's all about purpose with npcs it's always about purpose for me because that's the only important part for them that I need to have to actually create them. What do I want this NPC to do? Are they there to give information? Are they there to save the PCs from imminent threat? Are they there to be killed? Could also mm -hmm. be, right? If you have an NPC that needs to be killed by danger, that is a loved NPC by your players, hey, that is a purpose as well. And then think about what the effects of that purpose are. Okay, they get killed. What does that mean? Well, the NPC was a king, so the king, the kingdom is now in turmoil. The players are 
probably devastated and want revenge or something. But there's a lot of political implications, a lot of economy implications, a lot of social implications behind that. And these implications help you create the story that that purpose gives you. And that that story should in some way align or overlap with the story of the characters. If the story of the characters, for example, is to, I don't know, save the world. That's the overarching campaign theme. Mm -hmm. And then a dragon comes and kills the king while they are having a big ceremonial speech or something. And the players are there and they loved this king. They were good to them. They were friends with the king. Well, now this dragon is, first of all, threatening the kingdom. So killing it would be saving this kingdom and the world, maybe. But also it invests your players more on a personal level because this major NPC's purpose was to get killed in this scene. They did. And the implications on that are kingdom and turmoil. But also your players want revenge. Your players want to kill this dragon. And that aligns with that story that is kill this dragon. Mm -hmm. And that is how this major NPC, which now is dead, or the side character, has had a purpose for this game that was important to the story of this game. <laughs> basically and yeah. the, 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 you, you basically it's all about aligning stuff you have your story with your players that is there before the NPC that can be just in a theme right save the world we do not know which threat from we do not even know which world or how it's gonna look to save the world but we know that that's the theme of the game or the theme of the story and then everything aligns kind of with that if the story is saving the world a lot of NPCs are probably gonna help the players because saving the world you live in is something most of the people want that live in this world Exactly. So if their players meet a very high archmage, this archmage is probably still going to be interested in saving the world. And that is aligning with the players. I want this world to be saved as well. And I know a way we can further our goals. We need to go to the astral sea and retrieve something from there that was stolen from me by whatever being. Yeah. That is an adventure for your players given by this NPC. And this is then maybe a complete campaign arc that revolves around traveling the astral sea and fighting weird space alien monsters but it still aligns with the story of saving the world and this wizard is interesting because they have a story attached to them how why did it get stolen what is even stolen why do you need it and right there are questions coming up questions that are interesting to be answered yeah and, I, and that is it yeah and i think uh, one quick addition to that even mm -hmm. if your uh, the storylines or the goals align they might not even meet in the first place they can move parallel to each other yeah but if you want to create an interesting and good reoccurring npc side character whatever you want to call it look for the intersection between those storylines with the main storyline mm -hmm. and focus on that like you said they want uh, something was stolen from them that is their storyline and the the other storyline is saving the world. What is the intersection of that? Mm -hmm. And exactly focus on that. Okay, this object can do the th uh, thing you want and why and blah, and then you can work that out. But focus on that intersection part and move along this path mm -hmm. to create interesting storylines, interesting characters, interesting side characters, and in general, an awesome story. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we, we talked about creating these NPCs, right? There's not much advice on how to make them interesting because we did an episode on that or how to how to get them to be important because that is always a little bit decided by the players. Mm -hmm. They're going to decide which NPC they want to engage with. And you need to go with the flow. That's really the advice here. You need to go with the flow and you need to find the NPCs that align with the story going forward. You do not want to put a roadblock into your player's path, into the meta path they are taking, right? In the game, obviously plays roadblocks, challenges, and NPCs that challenge them, but not on the meta level. That, that's mm. not fun for them. So yeah, find aligning NPCs, go with the flow, and make them interesting and deep with stories and um, interesting quests and questions attached to them that will entice your players to do something. That is what it's really about. And with that, I think we discussed this enough and can get out of this episode for today, basically. <laughs> yeah, and with that, as per usual, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at WDM pod or you can also visit our website at www.wdm.com we also have a ko-fi if you want to check that out and please if you like the show leave us a review on your favorite podcast listening platform of your choice and with that thank you for listening hear you on the next one and bye 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 bye